President Muhammadu Buhari today spoke at the United Nations General Assembly. He said PNI this come attempting to cheat Nigeria of millions of dollars. Also boasts that the present Nigerian government is facing the challenges of corruption head on. And Nigerian senior officials are in the United Kingdom in a bid to counter the move by a PNID company to enforce the UK court judgment for Nigeria to forfeit some of its assets to the tune of 9 billion US dollars. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today Live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Okimale. Let's talk about presidential election uh, tribunal, the, which petition has now gotten to the Supreme Court. Let's tell you that the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abuaka, have filed an appeal challenging the judgment of the presidential election tribunal, which dismissed their petition and affirmed the peti election of President Muhammad Buhari. Elijah Atiku Abubaka and his party filed the appeal on 66 grounds, alleging that the panel of the presidential election tribunal heard in law when they relied on overall interest of justice to hold the president Buhari's exhibit R1 to R26, P85 and P86 were properly admitted in evidence. According to them, they pleaded and proved that allegation that the president gave false information of a fundamental nature to INEC in and of his qualification. The further stated that also pleaded that the Nigerian military denied being in possession of the president's certificate. According to the plaintiffs, the president's failure to produce his certificates or attach same to form CF-001 in the face of unequivocal denial by the army that his certificates were in its possession went to the root of the allegation. Let's also tell you now that a few weeks after the ministers began work for the Buhari second term in office, there's been a minor cabinet reshuffle. Today, the office of the secretary to the government of the federation says President Mohamed Buhari has approved the immediate redeployment of two ministers of state, Mr. Fessel Skeyamo, Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs, is to move to the Ministry of Labor and Employment as Minister of State, while Senator Tayo Alashwadra is to move to the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs as Minister of State. According to the statement, this redeployment takes effect from today. Let's bring you up to speed with some other political stories we're following for you on our political roundup. The Federal High Court has ordered the release of the convener of the Revolution Now protest, Mr. Omoye Leshoware. Justice Taiwo Taiwo gave the order after hearing the arguments from both the prosecution and defense counsel. Justice Taiwo gave the ruling on the grounds that there was no subsisting order before the court to further detain Mr. Showare, but he ordered Mr. Showare to deposit his travel documents before the court within 48 hours of the judgment, and Mr. Showare must be released to his lawyer, Mr. Femi Falana, who should in turn produce him in court whenever he's needed. Nobody can be detained in Nigeria without an order made by a competent court. And on that basis, uh, the court acceded to our application and ordered the immediate release of our client. The House of Representatives says it will investigate the activities and sources of funding of some non-governmental organizations for possible culpability in the unending spate of insurgency in the Northeast. This was part of the resolutions reached when a matter of urgent public importance on increased funding for the nation's security agencies was raised in the Green Chamber. The House also resolved to liaise with the Parliament of other countries with a view to resolving the restrictions on arms purchased by the military. We have believed that we should um, put some kind of legislation to uh, enhance their work and to help in the security issues concerning this country. The All Progressives Congress in Adamawa State has set up a 39-man steering committee to reconcile the three major factions in the state. The split of the party many believe was responsible for the woeful outing of the party, resulting in the loss of the governorship and most of the legislative seats in the 2019 general elections.
So let's begin tonight's conversation, everyone. On uh, Let's begin in London, where some senior government officials in the Buhari government are presently in the United Kingdom in a bid to stop action on the judgment of a UK court which ordered a forfeiture of Nigerian assets uh, to the company uh, PNID over a failed oil and gas deal. The Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Information, the CBN Governor, Inspector General of Police are all in London for that purpose. Take a listen to what they have been saying and doing since they got there on this matter. Uh, time does not run against uh, fr fraud. If your, if your basis for challenging a contract on arbitration award is on grounds of fraud, it does not matter when this comes up. And we've been able to discover that uh, there are a lot of you know, monetary inducement between uh, the, par the, the parties, between some officials of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the PNID. Unfortunately, this is a case where those who signed this agreement did not put Nigeria first, and hence Nigeria has been on the back foot. And we're trying to see what can be done to position to return Nigeria back to the front front position and be in control of this because this is purely fraud. So that's what they say they have been doing. Well, the issue of the PNID matter is part of the issues the president raised once he got the, op uh, the opportunity to speak at the United Nations General Assembly, President Buhari today. When he addressed that assembly, uh, he raised a lot of issues. The president said his government is facing the challenges of corruption head on. He talked about the issues of security, talked about the issue of poverty. Take a listen to some of uh, the sound bites of uh, the president at United Nations General Assembly was the fifth speaker, uh, part of the, some of the head of states who spoke at that General Assembly today. No threat is more potent than poverty and exclusion. They are the foul source from which common criminality, insurgency, cross border crimes, human trafficking, and its terrible consequences draw their inspiration. Poverty in all its manifestations remain one of the greatest challenges facing our world. Its eradication is an indispensable requirement for achieving sustainable development. In this regard, Nigeria has developed a national social investment program, a pro-poor scheme that targets the poorest and most vulnerable households in the country. There have been a lot of promises being made and the president is telling the world that he's committed and his government is committed to fighting corruption, to tackling poverty, to also on the issue of uh, 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 agreements and uh, keeping to those agreements that have been signed on issues of climate, on the issues of uh, international trade and investment. These are some of the issues the president brought to the table. How would you assess the president's speech today and some of the things that he committed to at that General Assembly? Plus the issue of the PNID. Let's get talking, everyone. My panel is ready in our Abuja studio. Professor Charles Ofoegbu is in our, in our Abuja studio, as well as Dr. Undu Unwokolo, our two egg eggs that are going to be dissecting these issues for us tonight on the program. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Let me begin with you, Professor Ofoegbu. How would you, for example, the president brought to the fore this issue of the PNID, he said, look, these guys are planning or they are attempting to cheat Nigeria of billions of US dollars. That was a good platform to restate this matter, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. To bring this to the forefront, because um, what's happening is that uh, a lot of uh, countries, the so-called super nations, realize what the, the way their citizens, both corporate and individual citizens, are doing to developing countries. And not many of them will tolerate a situation where a company, that, a company that now appears to be non-existent, a company existing in, a, in one island or the other, and strictly on paper, with no offices in Nigeria, with no plot of land, and entering into an agreement fraudulently 
to build a processing plant on which will it be built on the air? No evidence of that. So it's good he, bring, bring the, he brought this to the forefront at the United Nations. Let them realize what's going on, and they can't be paying lift service to the fight against corruption. You can't be criticizing developing countries having a scale of, uh, a scale of, uh, a scale of whatever you call it, or countries or corru corruption index. When in actual fact, what is happening is that citizens, both corporate and individual, are the ones at, at the root of the corruption in the so-called countries, particularly developing countries, such as Nigeria. We've had a very bad, terrible name as far as corruption is concerned. And this is one case where it is clear that this, corruption, this case is being sponsored by citizens that shouldn't even be, shouldn't be existing in those countries. The, the, the case of Halliburton is there. The case of Siemens is still there hanging on. And this, all these are centered around, the, uh, around corporate bodies and individuals within developing countries. So I think it's right he brought it up. Let the whole world hear it. When the president, uh, uh, Dr. Nwokolo, when the president said that the, the president of Nigerian government is facing the challenges of corruption head on, we're giving notice to, an in, to international criminal groups by the vigorous prosecution of the PNID scam attempting to cheat Nigeria of billions of dollars. Uh, Professor Fogbo has mentioned several cases of uh, multinational deals with private organizations with Nigeria that have gone bad. So when these world leaders listening, and a lot of people are listening today, what do you think will come to their mind and uh, discussing that matter on the world stage, considering also that senior government officials are also in London on this matter. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I, I even thought the president didn't dwell much. I thought he would have given it up to a minute or so to persuade other world leaders who, 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 you know, who sat in that congregation to, you know, to understand the situation we are in. You, know, you, you find out that <clears throat> international politics has a way it works. Even though it seems as if we are running behind the time. But I think part of what we need to be doing and, what, and part of what I felt we've not done much is to galvanize international attention to that, starting with you know, other African countries or other developing countries, to understand the predicament Nigeria is in now, how this will affect us. This is a country that is struggling to you know, to raise these people out of poverty. Um, this is a country that's struggling with um, medical care. This is a country with, that is struggling with infrastructure. And you expect him, you expect the country to pay this amount of money. I think what we've not done much is we've not galvanized international attention the way it should be. Now that we're in London, um, I think by now, I, I, I am expecting the president or the presidency to to start sending, you know, um, emissaries to other world leaders, other countries, to galvanize, you know, to draw the thing into such a way that it becomes a global issue that others will now weigh in. Now, I remember there is another, another point to this. We don't want a situation where other foreign investors will think Nigeria is not a good place to do business. So we need to be careful the way we do it. And the only way to do it is to present the case in such a way that other people become very sympathetic to our cause and join us in the fight. I think corruption is, is a global thing. Already we have an image. And secondly, considering that um, most of this country will be looking at us as in, oh, um, corruption is uh, endemic in your country. You caused it in the first instance. We needed to do more. And I think from what is going on, I expect the president and his team to start doing more by galvanizing international attention to a, to a situation where it becomes a standstill and then a resolution that favors us, you know, is, 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 is struck. Let's take a breather, Professor uh, Ofegbu and Dr. Unwokolo.